All right, guys, so today I'm going to be installing the billet rear control arms from Speed Logics on my 2009 Dodge Challenger SRT8. Now, what these arms actually do is allow you to correct and fine tune that rear suspension and get that excessive negative camber that these cars come with and get that into spec. Now, this job is actually very involved if you're going to do what I'm doing, which is dropping the complete rear subframe, but I'm also replacing a couple of key parts like the rear diff, the axles, the bushings, and the sway bar. So it only makes sense for me to go ahead and drop the rear subframe all the way. Now you might have to lower the rear subframe uh, because one of the bolts, you actually can get it out to replace a control arm because when you back it out, it hits the body of the Challenger. All right guys, enough talking, let's get started. This is pretty much how you can replace the rear lower control arms on your Challenger. Now the first thing you gotta do is get your car up on uh, jack stands and make sure you use jack stands because that's the safest way to do it. Now you want to remove the exhaust from the headers or manifolds all the way to the rear. Now there's a lot of variations of exhaust out there so I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do that. My car, for example, has long tubes and a stainless steel cap back so I just went ahead and removed that. The next thing you need to do is remove the drive shaft. You can disconnect it from the rear diff and just remove the center piece and that's probably the easiest way to do it without removing the entire drive shaft. Next, you have to remove the driver's side wheel well cover. It's held by seven plastic clips and two 10 mil nuts. Next, disconnect the small fuel tube and release the two clips and unplug the sensor and set the fuel tube sensor aside. Using a 10 mil socket, remove the nut holding the fuel fill tube to the inner wheel well and remove the hose clamp on the rear of the tank. Now, there might be some residual fuel in that tube, so use a bucket to catch any of that gas. Uh, once the lower hose clamp is removed, the entire fill tube can be removed. Next, the brake calipers have to be removed in order to lower the cross member. You don't want to stretch out your brake lines, so this is probably the best way to do it. Now, to eliminate the need of disconnecting the brake hose, remove the outer trailing arm bolt using two 18 mil wrenches, and this will allow enough room for the caliper to be fed through the linkages and hung uh, clear as the cross member is lowered. Now, the next step is to disconnect the emergency brake cables or your parking brake cables. Uh, it's pretty hard because of the location. It's right above the cross member and right above the rear diff. So you just follow the cable uh, where they connect together above the cross member and using a small pick or a screwdriver, you release the spring steel retainers and it'll come undone. Using a 16 mil socket, remove the upper uh, shock bolts for the rear shocks. Place a jack under the rear cross member, then loosen the four main cross member bolts using an 18 mil socket and carefully lower it to the ground. Now, as you can see, that was quite a bit of work. Thank you to my friend Omar at 68 Charger for coming to help me lower the rear cross member. That's really the only spot that I really needed help on. It's just good to have two hands, but if you look at the video, uh, the cross member just comes down nice and even. Now we can get to the fun part, which is actually installing the rear billet control arms. All right, now that we got the rear subframe uh, out, now we can change the rear arms. Now the first arm we're gonna change, well, the first arm we're gonna remove is this rear camera arm. It's the arm with the curve in it, and that's so it can clear the spring. Once you remove that arm, you actually have access to the rear trailing arm. That makes it easier to reach one of these bolts, and they are all 18 mil, so I got here an 18 mil wrench and my ratchet and socket. So let's just go ahead and remove this arm. All right, guys, as you can see, it's a lot of work. It's pretty involved, especially if you do it the way I did it by dropping the rear subframe. Now, if you just lower the rear subframe to get that one bolt out or you cut that bolt out, I saw people do that online, uh, it's not as involved. And you might have noticed in some of the video footage, I did already change out the rear sway bar to the Hotchkiss rear sway bar. Fun fact, I've had that rear sway bar for like six years 
when I purchased the front sway bar originally for the Challenger. I got the rear one, but once I found out you had to drop the rear subframe, I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting that involved with it. But now that I have to replace dip axles, I'm just gonna do the whole shebang I want. As always guys, I hope you found this video helpful or informational if you're looking at doing this modification or if you're looking to do your rear subframe bushings, this is how you can drop your rear subframe. As always guys, thank you for watching the channel. If you haven't already, don't be shy, hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions or you need any help, let me know in the comments below. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we are gonna manual swap the Challenger. So if you wanna see that, you wanna know how to manual swap your Challenger for the 6.1 SRT, I don't know about the other ones, definitely subscribe because we're gonna be covering that as much detail as possible. And uh, yeah guys, till next time, peace out.